So we've been looking at arrays and lists as collections, but it turns out that strings are collections too. Indeed, the way that we access arrays and lists, we've also been able to do with strings. We had, for example, when we made an array with some values in it, and we wanted to get to a particular value, we could index into it that way. Well, in the same way, we have been able to index into strings. Turns out we can do more than just index into them this way. All the methods that we've discussed so far work just as well on strings as they do on arrays and lists. So for each print line, we'll run through and print each character on its own line. We could do a map and for each character, I want to get back the character's value plus one, which actually gives us a bunch of integers. But if we convert that to a care, we get the string where all of the characters have been replaced by the character one above them in the ASCII table. We can also do other things. For example, I could count how many vowels are in here. by using a predicate that checks if something is a vowel. And the easy way to do that is to use the contains method on the string, A-E-I-O-U dot contains C. And we find that our string has four vowels in it, two I's, an A, and an E. There you go. So we can do all the things that we've been doing with arrays and lists, use them with strings, and everything works just as well. Technically, we could probably even take combinations and permutations of strings. I've never had a need to do that, but you could. The other thing that's very helpful to do with strings that relates to arrays and lists is to use a method called split. And what split does is it allows you to break a string up on some delimiter. A common use for this would be I have a string like this which has spaces in it, and I want to break it into the individual words. I could do a split on space, and you see that the value I get back is now, instead of one string, I have an array of strings, and each of the values that was between or separated by spaces is now part of this array. What we split on is technically called a regular expression. So let's create another string where I'm going to this space space is Put some extra spaces in there just to demonstrate that what that would do if we split on basic spaces like this then you'll note that we get some empty strings here because it said hey I can this was one delimiter and this was another delimiter and there was nothing in between okay. because this is a regular expression something we're not going to go into detail of, of how regular expressions work but one character that is very useful to us here is if we put something and then a plus, it says that we will break up on one or more of those. So in this case, if there are two spaces, it takes that as a single delimiter. And so it gives us back the thing that we wanted, even if it had multiple spaces in between. What's nice about this is that because it's an array, we can then use the methods that we've had before. So I can actually take a string like one, two, three, four, five, with spaces, split it on the spaces, and then map to int, and I convert my single string into an array of integers. This would this could be useful if, for example, you had a program and you wanted to read line and have multiple values on one line. This is a good approach for getting those values from being uh, basically a, a string of numbers into the numbers that you actually want. So you could make an array of numbers in that form.